just this way of introduction. Um, I'm from the Anti Property Network SA, and I'm essentially where a um, in all but name a union for people on Centrelink payments in Adelaide. Um, our members include job seekers, single parents, carers, aging, disability pensioners, um, and the vast majority of them. And it's been both uh, a strength of of our um, organisation, but also quite a challenge. And the vast majority of them have been people who are. I'm entirely new to the world of activism, to the world of um, community organising, um, political struggle. Um, so we um, formed in um, late 2013, um, a couple of months after the Abbott government was elected, because um, we recognised um, then that we were about to face, um, I think, unprecedented un un attacks on the uh, dignity incomes and rights of welfare recipients in Australia and unfortunately we were um, proven correct. Um, that's um, what we've seen both from the UP government and now of course from the Turnbull government which is in fact just an Abbott government but with a slightly more articulate uh, spokesman. Um, so what is what is going on at the moment in Australia in terms of um, welfare policy? I want to um, we'll give you a few anecdotes and personal stories to sort of set the scene in terms of you know what's what's happening around um, Centrelink. Um, uh, just a few. Um, some of these people are members of our organisation in Adelaide. Some of them are, are people um, who we've assisted on an individual level with uh, um, Centrelink grievances or with job agency grievances. I'll speak in a little more detail like about this um, stuff a little later. Um, <coughs> Christian, he's a, like he's a man in his um, mid-50s. He's homeless and he refuses to go on Centrelink because he would rather sleep rough than deal with all of the stress all of the hoop after hoop after hoop that he has to jump through in order to get his um, new start payment. Now, because because Christian is homeless, um, he would um, he would qualify for an exemption from his mutual obligation requirement. Some um, mutual obligation, of course, um, should be in quotation marks because there's nothing mutual um, about it. But more on that a bit later. Um, now, of course. Um, uh, um, so, uh, um, so Christian would um, be able to um, to avoid looking for work, uh, um, like avoid work for the doll, uh, um, like avoid all of those useless appointments, because obviously when you're homeless you've got much more important things to worry about. Unfortunately, Christian's experience has been that the uh, job agencies have um, refused to, um, to play nice and um, He's found it extremely um, frustrating and exhausting to get Centrelink um, to do their job. So um, he's decided that he would rather sleep rough than be on a Centrelink um, payment. And, what, and we're in close contact with him. And we're hoping to um, 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 to change his mind and um, support him to um, um, to fight for his rights. Um, Shane is a Casual worker, um, he receives a part new start payment, not the full rate. Um, he only gets a modest income from work, and every month he gets briefed by his job agency because over and over again they schedule their appointment for him at the same time as his work shift. And every month he tells them, "I'm working on this day at this time. Can you please reschedule or at the or at the very least, if I if I can't get off work, I'm early. Please don't cut off my payment because being at work is a pretty reasonable excuse for missing your job agency on appointment. Um, unfortunately, he keeps getting breached, despite the fact that you know, you'd think being at work is a pretty good excuse for not being at your job agency. Um, Wendy 
is an unemployed um, technician with a double degree in chemistry and physics, um, you know, has like highly advanced computer skills, um, she's in the mid-50s. When she was unemployed, um, her job agency required her to do a basic computing course. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many of you have seen the uh, Ken Loesch film, uh, I, Daniel Blake. Um, you remember the scene where you know, he's, he's, he's learning how to use a computer for the first time. Well, Wendy could have taught that course and could have taught the uh, course much better than the job agency caseworker. <laughs> um, <coughs> TJ is, a, is an unemployed woman with some health issues. Um, I, I'm so she's with a, a disability employment service. So they're like the job agencies, but in, in theory, they're um, meant to be a lot more accommodating. In practice, they're often quite a bit worse. Um, and they are requiring her to come in every week um, and cold call employers for an hour because apparently in 2017, that's how you find work. <laughs> you know, you pick up the yellow pages, you flick through, um, you randomly call up potential, um, potential bosses and that's obviously how like all of us found our jobs. <laughs> and they're requiring her to do this um, like our understanding is that she's only required to come in fortnightly. They disagree because, um, and again, I'll go into this like a bit more, um, like a little later. Um, financially, they do quite well if they can get her to come in weekly instead. And of course, it's it's a total waste of her time. Um, Eugenie is a part-time um, relief teacher. She's being pressured to do work for the doll. Um, the, uh, the guidelines are pretty clear. If you're working casually or part-time, you do not have to do work for the doll. Um, for months and months, she was being pressured to do work for the doll, and she only found out that she didn't have to do work for the doll because, um, by chance, she happened to come across one of our flyers. Um, Bonnie Ann is a single mum from the southern suburbs of Adelaide. She spends 78% of her income on rent. Uh, she's on a new start allowance. To put things in perspective, if you're spending um, more than 30% of your income on rent, you're deemed to be suffering from um, housing stress. If you're spending more than 50% of your income on rent, which is the case for one quarter of people on new start, you're suffering from from housing crisis. Now we don't actually have a term for someone who's spending sixty or seventy, or in this case, or in this case, almost eighty percent of their income on rent. Maybe something like housing apocalypse or something like that. <laughs> There's just no way for her to make ends meet when that much of of her payments. You know, we all know how low new start is two hundred sixty seven dollars a week. When that much of your payment is going on rent, you can't survive. Kat eats once a day so that um, her son can get a proper meal. Um, Byron did work for the doll um, a couple of years ago at a church in the middle of Adelaide. They made him hand-pick weeds out of the front yard for seven hours a day. Oh. Not exactly something you'd put on your CV. <laughs> so what on earth is going on? Well, um, um, the answer I'll give is um, uh, probably to many of you like a very familiar one, which is that um, all of these all of these trends, um, this um, um, punishment that is that is meted out over and over again to unemployed people and sole parents and pensioners and carers and students. None of this is accidental. This is not. This is not incompetence. This is not um, poorly designed policy. This is not um, a government um, schemes that have been bungled. Although that does um, like happen a fair bit. This is a very deliberate strategy um, to make the um, lives of those who are out of work as frustrating and as stressful and as unpleasant as possible. 
and um, it's been like that for a long time. Um, what we've seen happen over the last um, few years is is an intensification of that, um, and I think it's worth like exploring in a bit more detail, um, like um, what that intensification looks like. Um, I'm a, I'm a all familiar with the um, robo deaths scheme. Um, this is a scheme that, if it was being, I'm like administered by any other government agency, if it, if it was being like administered by any private sector organisation, would have been um, quashed by a legal challenge really, really early on. No organisation in Australia has the kinds of powers when it comes to debt recovery that Centrelink has. Just, just um, think about this. They, you receive a debt notice in the mail. Um, you're told that even if you want to uh, um, appeal that debt notice, you are required to make repayments even while you're in the process of appealing that debt. In, in no other context would that be like acceptable. But when it comes um, to welfare recipients, they're fair game in this country in a way that no one else would be. Um, like another example, um, and I think one which I'd be keen to um, I'm like hear a little bit about from Sarah like as well, because I think here's an example where uh, the, the attacks on welfare recipients and the attacks on, on workers overlap in a really profound way. This is the, uh, the um, PATH scheme, the so-called youth internships, um, and you know, like 100,000 of those uh, will be lined up over the next few years. Um, the, the vast majority of those will be in hospitality and retail, like in industries where workers are like already very low paid and, and quite often underpaid and with very little job security. There's no doubt that this will drive down wages, and I should say this is actually something we know like a fair bit. When you squeeze people out of work, when you make their lives harder, when you put more obligation on them, it does um, make them more desperate to get off welfare, even <coughs> even to the extent of you know having to take on jobs which, frankly, they ought to have a right to refuse. Um, I want to say that. I think it's okay for people to say no to jobs. Like, I think it's okay for people to be able to re to refuse jobs that are unpleasant, that are unsafe, that are that are crap, that don't allow them to spend time with their family and their kids, or you know, be be able to drop off their kids at school and pick them up in the afternoon. Um, I think um, the idea of the uh, job snob, which um, the, uh, which the government uses them to justify these sorts of attacks is of course a myth. But I also think that every single person um, who's unemployed should have um, the unconditional right um, to decide which sorts of jobs they want to take on. I don't think it should be up to the job agency um, to decide that. Like I think unemployed people should be able to make that decision without fear of having their payments cut. But we know that when you squeeze unemployed people, that puts downward pressure on wages. The um, Productivity Commission did a study into um, work for the doll um, about 10 years ago. Um, and this was back when work for the doll was a much smaller scheme than it is now. And they found that work for the doll um, had an impact of between 2 and 4% on driving down wages. So it, mm -hmm. it, it helped to lower wages by um, between 2 and 4%. So this is, I'm just the Productivity Commission, not Greenleft Weekly. So you know, this, is a, <laughs> this, is a, this is a pretty, uh, you know, conservative, like establishment source that was um, 
that was um, saying this. And the one thing in particular, um, which I mentioned quite a few times, is the role of job agencies in like harassing unemployed people, in um, making their lives as difficult as as um, as um, possible. And I'm like here, I just want to say that at um, the anti poverty network, where um, um, we owe a massive um, debt of gratitude to uh, um, the Australian Unemployed Workers Union, who's done some tremendous uh, work, really helping to shine a light on um, what a fundamentally um, nasty and crooked system um, this is. And we've sort of followed their lead. We we provide like advice and um, support to job seekers on a regular basis. We, I'm like we often have to like accompany them on appointments. Um, I'm like it's amazing how much the balance of power changes when you know you've got the caseworker there who's normally used to sort of dictating terms and to unemployed people and you know forcing them to uh, sign contracts which they shouldn't have to sign and suddenly they've got someone next to them, you know, and um, I'm like the whole dynamic. Changes. I think the really powerful thing is that it, it's actually unemployed people who are providing that advocacy and that support um, to other unemployed people. And that, and you know, like if that's not practical solidarity, I'm not sure what is. Um, but uh, there's just such a vast number of people out there who, um, are like who are under attack, and so we're only able to reach a very small number of them. And of course, the most uh, the most fundamental thing of all is the fact that welfare payments are so meagre to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean, why the hell is it that we've gone 23 years without a raise to New Start allowance? Why the hell is it that we've gone 30 years um, without a raise um, to youth allowance? I mean, I just I think we ought to reflect on like how much uh, the Australian economy is. Um, grown and transformed over that period, how much the the um, labour market has changed, um, like how different looking for work is um, today than it was then. I mean, we have gotten to the point where business groups, you know, like have come out and, uh, and have admitted that New Start is too low, that there's, um, um, you know, searching for work takes resources, you need a car, you need a phone, uh, I mean, you need like an internet connection. This is obviously putting aside, you know, the elephant in the room, which is that there aren't enough jobs mm. to go around, which um, the government won't admit, but, you know, it's, it, it is um, pretty damn obvious. Um, and so um, that's, that's the situation where we're at now. Um, um, but I just want to end on a bit of an upbeat note, which is that <laughs> I, I think something is happening on a modest um, scale, which um, should give us hope. And that is, um, welfare recipients are are organising themselves and uh, campaigning um, to challenge some of these attacks. Um, not only like in Adelaide, I should say, like um, like I mentioned, the Unemployed Workers Union. And there are um, terrific groups also being set up in New <coughs> South Wales and. Queensland, um, I think that's I think that's something that's um, long overdue. Um, none of these groups are massive. We have a number of suburban branches in Adelaide. They're all slowly finding their feet, but they have a long way to go. Um, and last week we were able to achieve a little bit of history. We were able to convince the city of Port Adelaide Enfield, which is in Adelaide's northern suburbs, um, quite a high unemployment region to become the first um, local governments in Australia to publicly advocate for an increase to New Start allowance. Um, that's never happened before, and uh, it's been a terrific morale booster um, for the entire network, for all of our members who are doing it tough and who've um, and who felt for a long time that they're facing an uphill battle. Um, so I, I think the, the, the situations are grim, but there are there are signs that um, suggest that you know, there are also good reasons and to be hopeful. Um, and um, like I'm probably just about out of time.
That's it. Like I think I went about that. <laughs>